That was more painful than you know. Sitting down's painful right now. Um, had a little operation a week ago today, um, which didn't go 100% to plan, um, just to ensure that there's no more little Liams in the world. We've got two, we don't want any more. And it's sitting here isn't comfortable. <laughs> sitting anywhere isn't comfortable. So I'll leave it to your imagination as to exactly what happened, but suffice to say I'm on antibiotics and painkillers right now. Um, however, there's an exciting update that came out yesterday on 9th edition um, on the Fort Warhammer community page and I did say that when things were coming out on the community page I'd start doing update videos obviously I promised that we did the Indomitus unboxing and we've stopped with the exception of a couple of Endless Cook-Off any podcasts other stuff's been going on in life and it's made life really really hard stuff that's um, very close to me including my my immediate family um, looks like my eldest is going to have to have heart surgery which sucks and it's been really hard um, and it might mean that content remains sporadic but I have been getting abuse um, from people like Hellstorm Mikey and Valrak and etc. about my sub numbers. So I need to do something because they're all racing past me right now and um, I don't like that. I like to win stuff. So we're going to start the content train again and hopefully start putting out some, some more frequent videos. I start a new job in just over a month and a half, I think it is now, which is no longer shift pattern, no longer nights, and it gets me to a nice routine. And I'm hoping it means I can do a video a week for you guys and it becomes regular content. And they reckon that regular content's what wins, right? So fingers crossed we can start feeding you the ninth edition updates, feeding you the 40K community updates, and just talking about this amazing hobby. And focusing on this rather than all the rubbish that's gone on in the world. So what is the latest update? Well, um, for me, this is probably the biggest rules change that has happened in ninth edition so far. If you looked at the Undometers unboxing, we did go through the rules and I tried to pick up most of the changes to the ninth edition rule set that were different from the eighth edition rule set. I think we managed to get most of them. Uh, I don't think we got all of them, but we did manage to get most of them. And uh, there were some subtle changes. There were some slightly bigger changes. This, however, is odd. This, I think, is probably the biggest change to the ninth edition rule set, in my opinion, so far, out of almost all of them. Um, and that's that's saying something. When you consider that we've had changes to terrain and scenery and how that works and interacts with uh, with your armies, we've had changes to the way the missions are played, massive changes to the way the missions are played, so they're kind of more ITC format. We've had changes to the way that uh, melee works and who gets to go first and all these other little sort of changes that have happened. We've had changes to the way that command point rerolls work. There's lots and lots and lots of changes that have happened. Massive changes to how you build your army. Essentially a complete reversal of the system, so you now start off with a set number of command points. Um, and you spend command points for detachments, etc. Again, it's all in that Domus' video if you want to check it out, or if you haven't seen videos or battle reports already. But I still think this is probably the biggest change. Now, last Saturday, they did another live reveal. Um, and we got some more Necron models. There's a Xenos race is getting a lot of love right now, which is epic. I'm really happy for that. They showed a new Death Guard model, and there was kind of a, a sort of leaked other one in another image. And of course, we had 7,452 new Space Marine models because you can't release one Death Guard Chaos model and like three Necron Xenos models without having that extra 7,000 Marine models. We need to make sure that they definitely have a codex that's three times the size of everybody else's. Salty, really salty. Anyway, they brought out these new Space Marine models as well and they showed the data sheets. And one of the, one of the units that they showed us was the Heavy, heavy Intercessor Squad. Because if Marines needed something, they definitely needed a Toughness 5 3 wound model that also has objective secured. They were, they were not doing very well. They were struggling all over the place, Marines. They needed to be more competitive. I'm going to stop before I get far too salty. Um, but they did bring out this new Heavy Intercessor squad and they showed us a data sheet. And in the data sheet, in the keyword section, um, had a, a word core, which we hadn't seen before. And that's interesting because obviously in 8th edition was the first time really we were we were properly introduced to the keyword system where you have faction keywords and then keywords. Those keywords meant different things. It, it gained them abilities or rules. Um, it meant that they interacted with other sections or portions of their army in different ways. And, and for me, I think it was a good change. It wasn't perfected, but it was a good change. 
Obviously, we've seen it come across in the Age of Sigmar model. Um, and again, I, I quite liked it. I like the fact that if everybody had the Ultramarines keyword, they affected each other with their auras and abilities. And, and your Ultramarines Warlord could only impact your Ultramarines troops. It couldn't impact your Blood Angels troops. But actually, there was faction keywords that meant that you did influence Imperium as a whole. And I really like the keyword system. And we saw this core word on this new heavy, heavy intercessor data sheet, something we haven't seen before, like I say. So the community... Um, and Facebook and all those kinds of people, well, what's this massive keyword that we haven't seen before? So what they've done is they've given us a community update on the website. You can go to warhammercommunity.com and read this for yourself. And they've brought out core units. Now, core units they've described to us aren't limited to just uh, troop choices. So it's not just um, the ones that fill your troop slots. So they're saying oh, in this uh, particular article that elites such as Terminators, Lich Guard, fast attacks such as bikes and tomb blades, etc. They all have the core keyword. You'll notice that these examples are all from the Space Marines and Necrons Codex because they're the first two codexes to come out. Um, but you can obviously assume that that's going to disseminate across all of the other codexes. So a lot of other codexes who have infantry or fast attack choices that aren't massive tanks or specifically specialized units perhaps are probably going to have a core Keyword. Winters explained it in our WhatsApp chat as the sort of unit you might think will make up a demi company for Space Marines is possibly going to be a core unit. So I would imagine we will see Devastators, Hellblasters, Outriders, Bikes, um, Assault Marines, almost definitely Terminators, um, probably Aggressors, things like that. I'm assuming will all have a core keyword infantry um, type models. Um, I say infantry type models because obviously an Outrider or a bike isn't an infantry model, but you kind of get one. They're not a massive tank. They're not a floating fortress. They're not a demigod or a primarch. They are a a relatively what would be considered a a run of the mill unit in in a in an army. So why have these units got core as a keyword? Why bringing a new keyword? Well, the community article tells us that they're making a massive change to the way aura abilities work. Now, this is something I spoke about with Mikey P, with Brom, with Chris on the endless cacophony, with Winters numerous times. I have always had a problem with how auras work in 8th edition. I don't necessarily think that auras are a terrible thing, but I had a problem with how they work. Um, I didn't like the fact that you would have a captain at the back of the board with his three predators, or a chaos lord at the back of the board with his three plague burst crawlers in the Death Guard army, or or anything, or an autark that with wings that would just sit at the back with his fire. Those sorts of scenarios. I mean, this is these are a select few where I'm picking three heavy support choices and a, and a HQ. But you get the sort of picture. I hated the fact you'd have these heroes and champions who would be sat at the back of the board with this big bubble surrounding all these units just to maximise your um, maximise your effectiveness in terms of rerolls. Now. Obviously, for competitive play, it makes sense to do that, to maximise those sorts of abilities and auras. Why wouldn't you? It doesn't seem to make any sense to not maximise those auras and abilities because you basically want to be as efficient as possible. But narratively speaking, and I'm a more narrative player than a competitive player, that doesn't seem to make sense. It just, I don't like the fact that you could have a captain at the back of the battle grid just staying with his tanks whilst all of his troops rush forward. He goes, yep, off, off, off you go. You, you, you do that. You go and fight that war. Um, I hated that. And they've changed the way auras work. So this is so very exciting for me. Basically now, um, the wording is changed so that it will affect core Ultramarines or core Death Guard or core Saim Han keywords rather than affecting everything. Now, for the Space Marine example that they give us, that means that your captain will be able to impact and affect your intercessors or your assault intercessors or your aggressors or your heavy intercessors or your hell blasters probably they haven't said hell blasters but probably definitely your terminators your bikes etc your captain will be able to influence and inspire those men behind him that are on the battle grid boots on the ground he will be able to inspire them what he won't be able to do is inspire the three repulsor executioners all parked together from miles away. He won't be able to do that anymore. They don't have the core keyword. They're not a core unit. That is a huge change and I don't there's for me there's no negative to it. The only thing that is a bit weird and I'm for this change, but it's a bit weird is that these characters will also no longer be able to influence themselves. A captain basically can't have a word with himself to make sure that he doesn't miss that one, and he doesn't need that roll. He doesn't get that reroll anymore. He, he's lost that. So captains can't captains can't influence themselves. Equally, a lieutenant near a captain can no longer brief his captain up and tell him, "You make sure you wound. You need to make sure you wound. Don't don't come back here not wounding." That's gone. 
So lieutenants and captains can no longer influence each other because they don't have the core keyword. Something that upset Winters ever so slightly was the fact that it's called core, core of an army, and the fact that a captain is no longer considered a core of a battle dummy company. And I, I get what he's saying. Narratively speaking, with that specific terminology, a captain is definitely a core of a Space Marine's army. He's going to be there because he's the leader. But in terms of how this interacts with the gameplay and the, and the new system, I'm 100% for it. The fact that a captain cannot influence himself. I mean, he's already hitting on two pluses. Does he need that reroll one? Probably not. The lieutenant, who's a lieutenant and therefore his second in command, shouldn't really be briefing the captain up as to how to how to do his job properly. Um, and they do specifically give us the new rights of battle aura ability from the Codex Space Marines for a captain. It says, when a friendly chapter core unit is within six inches of this model, each time the model in that unit makes an attack, we roll a hit roll of one. 100% for this change. This is amazing. What does it mean for 40k in 9th edition? Well, what I'm hoping it means is I'm hoping it means we may see less characters with loss of heavy firepower bubbles sitting at backs of boards, maybe less bubbles in general in terms of static bubbles. I'm hoping it's, it means we see more characters throwing themselves forward into the fray. There's a lot of changes overnight which could have impacted this. Slay the Wall is no longer a guaranteed thing every game. You can pick it as a secondary objective, of course, in your match play missions, but it's not a guaranteed victory point for killing the enemy Warlord. So if your opponent doesn't pick Slay the Warlord, and you lose him, it, it still hurts because it's your Warlord and it's a character that obviously you've spent a lot of points on and tends to bring abilities with him. But you're more inclined to put him in harm's way and, and, and take a roll of the dice and, and try and throw him at the enemy than you are perhaps going to hold him back and protect him because you don't want to give them Slay the Warlord. I've played games where in 8th edition where that single Slay the Warlord victory point has turned the tide as to who wins or it's a draw. So that encouraged people to throw them forward more. And now that they're no longer going to buff things like repulsors and I'm, I'm assuming they don't buff things like basilisks and stuff like that then you're less likely, I think, to see Space Marine heroes at the back of the board, and they're probably going to be running forward with the troops, with the infantry, with the core units that they can influence, which can only be a positive thing for 40k, in my opinion, is getting rid of... Everyone hated the castles. Uh, am I wrong? Tell me if I'm wrong below. Does everyone hate the car Did everyone hate the castles that existed in 8th edition? I know for a fact that before 8th edition came along, people hated Death Stars, which is where characters joined specific units to create incredibly powerful single units. People hated Death Stars. I know in 8th edition, I hated castles. I hated saying, I'm making sure my captain's within six inches of this repulsor and this repulsor and this Leviathan Dreadnought, and I'm making sure my lieutenant's in range of this repulsor and this repulsor and the uh, Brom. I hated that in in 8th. So I'm, this is a change I'm really, really positive about. Now, there has been some mild outcrying that's existed within my hobby circles where people have said, well, people like Magnus, for example, Styler said this, people like Magnus relied on every attack hitting because he didn't have many attacks. 100% agree with him. 100% agree with him. But of course, that change won't take effect for people like Magnus until the Codex comes out. And you would like to think, Games Workshop, that they have written the rules for these models with this change in mind. So maybe someone like Magnus would gain a couple of attacks. I don't know. Um, it's because he can't re-roll those ones anymore. Maybe he gains an attack to make up for the fact that he can't re-roll those ones to still give him that same value in terms of his individual prowess on the battle grid. I don't know. I don't know how that looks. Ultimately, however, you have characters buffing the ranking file below them but not above them. And I kind of like that. One thing I would like to see from a narrative perspective, but this is probably far too complex to ever translate into rules in 40k, but your lieutenant can't buff your captain. I get that, because captain's a higher rank than your lieutenant. Your captain buffing your lieutenant, however, your captain's a higher rank than the lieutenant. He should be able to inspire his lesser ranks, and the lieutenant is a lesser rank. However, like I say, that's probably far too complicated to put into a rule system like 9th edition. It's already pretty complex as it is, and I think it's amazing. Um, so I'm okay with this, I'm happy with it. And that's the crux of the change. Auras no longer affect units that aren't core. Core is only going to be things like infantry, bikes, elites like Terminators, etc. Probably not repulsors. Well, they said specifically not repulsors. Core units also won't be HQ characters, so characters can't buff characters. It's really interesting to see how this is going to be implemented codex to codex because obviously different codexes work in different ways. 
a lot of people panicking about how that's going to affect their tyrannids or how it's going to affect their orcs. This change will not affect your specific army until you get your new codex, as far as I can tell. So don't panic, because you'd like to think, like I say, they've written this new codex with these rules in mind. So that being said, that's a very exciting change to 9th edition. I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's brilliant. Um, I'm going to give you another quick update. My Space Marine project. A lot of people ask me about the Space Marine project and the Space Wolves. It's still going. I'm currently trying to work out a ski. In fact... Wait, wait, I, this is hard for me to get up and down. So I am, in fact, you can, I don't know if you can see focus. I am, in fact, painting up intercessors at the moment. Um, I'm not sold 100% on the colour scheme I'm using for them. So I, I don't want this to be an army that I get bored of halfway through and chuck it. So I, I need to make sure it's really cool and, and it's really sweet. This is a very dark grey space wolfy theme with a bronze top. It's okay. It's quite easy at the moment to do. Mm, we'll see. Um, I will be carrying on with them very, very soon. Life has gotten in the way. Um, with things that have gone on with my dearest beloved winters, with the way um, the channel's exploded, De deploymentzone.tv exploded since that, it's been insanely busy. We've had uh, other problems going on. We've had other family issues going on. So I, I will be carrying on with the Space Marines. I know people are asking questions about them and dying to see an update, and perhaps I'll do an update really, really soon. I like the fact that these aura abilities don't really change the way I play because I never really abuse those types of auras anyway. So I'm quite happy with that. It's going to be interesting how things like Lord Discordance interact with things like Mauler Fiends, isn't it? Because he's specifically there to buff demon engines. That could give them an even better... Hmm, okay. That could make them even more important in things like Chaos Space Marine Armies. Anyway, that's a, an aside. The Space Marine project is still on. There is... I don't know if you can see it behind me in the shelf up... Nope, there, up there. There is some repulsors there and some more infantry... This is hard. Some more infantry there on top of shot glasses um, that are being painted slowly. I'm getting through them, but it's going to take me some time. And I've been talking a lot in Discord, actually, the deploymentzone.tv Discord, about whether I'm going to go pure Space Wolves or whether I'm going to make them a custom chapter that I can use as Space Wolves, but also use as other rules for events and tournaments and stuff like that. Because Winters and I are going to try and get to more events when COVID finally disappears. Go away, COVID. When COVID finally disappears. Um, so there's a possibility I'll be using them as a custom chapter and we've been writing some lore up and stuff in the Discord. It's been really exciting. Discord's been amazing through this pandemic, to be fair. Um, so they, they are coming. It's just taking some time. Also, as you guys can tell, I'm still affiliated with the Beard Struggle. Um, there's still a discount code below for you to get discount. It was always 15%. They were told me recently it's going to go up to 20% that I can give people as discount. When I last checked, that hadn't changed, but it might have changed by the time this video goes out. Um, if not, hold off for a little bit and, and it will go up to 20% soon, you can get 20% off products. We raised a lot of money for male suicide awareness, um, and now a lot of you know why I picked that charity. So um, I'll continue to donate commission because I think it's the right thing to do. Um, and these products are amazing, so that's cool. Uh, obviously, Element are still working their asses off during this pandemic. Um, they've had to open and then close and then open again because they're up in the Manchester area um, in Stockport, so they've had some issues because they had a local lockdown. If you guys can continue to support Element, um, it would be much appreciated using our link below. Yes, it does also support us, but it's not about that at the moment. It's just keeping Element going because they are a, a wonderful sponsor and a fantastic business. Um, and that's about that. I was, the, the last thing I want to talk about very, very quickly, very, very shortly, and this is off the back of Winters' video. Um, and since then, other people have put content out there, like Lutin and other people have made videos about their struggles. Um, don't struggle in silence and don't suffer alone. If you need to talk to people, this community is phenomenal. You can reach out to me directly, of course you can. Um, there's links everywhere for my, I think my email is on the YouTube page. You can message me on YouTube and comment. You can message me on Facebook. Find me on Facebook, message me on Instagram. If you want to reach out, reach out. And if I can respond to you, I absolutely will. Um, one thing I will say is our Discord, the deploymentzone.tv Discord, which is accessed by being a DZTV patron or a subscriber, is a phenomenal place 24 7 for you to talk to other people uh, if you're having problems i've done it recently it's amazing the support is incredible anyway big change to ninth hopefully we're back with more regular videos please subscribe if you haven't already because my numbers are dwindling and everyone's taking the mick at me and i don't like that uh, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one <laughs>